Finally, a white LTD snake bite. Funny enough, this is not the one that I've ordered for the shop back in March 2021. This one belongs to a friend. It is here right on time though, because I want to make a point with it. And that is, should you still be buying the snake bite brand new in 2022? Or should you be saving your money for something else that's probably coming? I'm gonna give you a couple of buyer's perspectives and an educated guess. Ah yeah, that is so satisfying. <laughs> The snake bite. We all know it, we love it, and it has been around since late 2010. Since day one, there is an ESP and an LTD version. It went through a couple of changes. The early 2011 models had the Spurzel locking tuners and EMG 8160 pickups. Shortly after that, the EMG James Hetfield set was released and they started putting it into the snake bite. The newer models feature Macassar Ebony Browner fingerboard and stainless steel frets. Ever since late 2011, the tuners are LTD locking instead of the spurzels. Some of the early models had bone nuts. The body and neck are still multiple pieces of mahogany. Basically, a small couple of changes in the hardware and construction like the neck joint. 2011 models had the set through neck construction, now it's a set neck. The biggest change, this particular one was made in Korea, but some of them are now made in Indonesia. Now for the big question from the title of this video, should you be buying the LTD Snake Bite brand new in 2022? Let me try and give you a couple of perspectives. The first perspective is someone who never owned a James Hetfield signature, either the Iron Cross, the Vulture, the Snake Bite, or at least never owned a Snake Bite. The second perspective are people like me that had been following James for 10, 15, 20 years and had the Snake Bite, Iron Cross, Vulture in various colors, or at least the Snake Bite in black, satin, whatever. Then there's the third perspective, and it's an educated guess. I'm gonna tell you why you should save up, because I think that something else interesting is coming from James. The first perspective, and I know there are a lot of people out there who never had a James Hetfield signature, the Iron Cross, the Vulture, the Snake Bite, you should definitely buy one, they're amazing. Go for the white LTD snake bite if you've never owned one. The second perspective is me and a lot of people in the Guitars of James Hetfield community. We've seen the entire life cycle of the snake bite ever since it was first released. There was the white gloss, the black gloss was discontinued, the black satin came in its place. Later on they introduced the snake bite baritone, which was a limited edition in purple and obviously baritone. And the new one is the Kuyu Camo Satin. Sure, the camo is nice, looks great, it's a snake bite, so it plays and feels great, it's a quality guitar, but it's just a color. If I buy the camo just for the color after owning the white, the black, after trying the LTDs, I'm sure I'm gonna get bored with it pretty fast, because it's the same guitar in a different color. And it didn't take long for people to start selling these, they got bored with them. I shouldn't be judging though, I'd buy a Les Paul Custom in 20 different colors. Anyway, if you're like me, you had been buying the snake bites and the signature ever since 2011, you had the black snake bite, you had the white snake bite, probably ESP or LTD, doesn't matter. You just want to buy the camo or anything else, just to have another color, like a collector. But hear me out why you should save your money. Here's the educated guess. Two months ago, I did a video about the Iron Cross, in which I talked about the Gibson James Hetfield relationship. You can go and watch that video for the full story about why the Gibson James Hetfield relationship didn't work. Long story short, James was not happy with the management and the way Gibson treated artists back then. Sure, there are two sides to every story. Probably James had a big ego back then as well. But he was not the only artist complaining about Gibson's management. That was a long time ago now, almost 20 years. Gibson is no longer under the same management. Since 2019, James Curley has taken over as CEO and he has been doing okay so far, especially in the artist relationship department. Even though it's business, it is called a relationship for a reason, because it works like an actual relationship between partners. You have to care for the other and sometimes be willing to make compromises. Sometimes it's just not working out and you have to be able to let go, move on and change. 
20 years can feel like a lifetime and can change a lot of things. Maybe it's time to catch up with an old flame. A month ago, one of the top dogs at Gibson, Caesar, uploaded this photo of an 84 Gibson Explorer standing in front of Kirk Hammett's signature guitars. I sincerely hope I called it in my Iron Cross video. If James goes to Gibson, they will do an 84 Explorer signature for him. A month later, here is Caesar standing in front of Kirk's guitars with an 84 Explorer. Of course, I had to comment, come on guys, give us Papa Head already. Check out who liked it. Caesar himself. I think it's time for a change. James could be in ESP and Gibson at the same time just as Kirk. Hey, it is an educated guess, but I'm saving up just in case. Back to the matters at hand, the LTD snake bite in Snow White. I try to give you guys as usual the official listing and specs if they are available in the website of the manufacturer ESP. Here's a quick look at the specs, now let's go through them. We got the usual, the 2011 I reviewed had a 4 piece mahogany body, it had a 3 piece mahogany neck just as this one, set neck construction with a heel, this one has Makassar ebony fingerboard, 14 inch radius, 22 extra jumbo stainless steel frets, LTD locking tuners, the EMG James Hetfield set, Tone Pro locking bridge and tailpiece. <sighs> I guess the only place that I'm gonna be seeing the cavities painted properly are on Japanese guitars. The Indonesian and Korean are gonna be messy like that with the shooting paint. I see a little bit of a difference with the 2011 model. I see a long neck tenon. I'm not sure I saw this in the 2011 model. Maybe it was there but it was better concealed. Here it is clearly visible. Other than that we have the quick connect for the EMG pickups and the routing for the electronics going to the back. It is similar to the 2011 model. The EMG James Hetfield set. For more info on the origins of those, you can watch my white ESP snake bite video review. That's the JH neck, made in October 2021. This is the JH bridge, I'm assuming it was made around the same time, sure enough, October 2021. I'm gonna put a brand new 9V battery in this one because it came without one in it. And I had some interesting first impressions because I didn't know the battery is not in sight. Check out this small demonstration. This is the snake bite without the 9V battery in it. I had god knows how many guitars with EMG pickups, but I was today years old when I found out that you can play it without the 9V battery in it. <laughs> There's almost no gain at all, like you're playing really weak passive pickups, but the sound is there. If your 9 volt battery is dead, it's gonna sound something like that. Let's put the battery in it and try that same riff. Headsets usually measure around the 20 case. sure enough the bridge is at 21.1, switching over to the neck. And this one is a bit hotter and I've sensed that when I was playing clean, these are a bit too high output for the clean sound. Let's see the middle position, 10.83. I've actually heard the same complaint from a couple of people, they say that the headset is too high output for their cleans, the pickups are not too close to the strings or anything, they are properly set, but they are like crazy hot for clean. Especially the neck pickup, it's very close to break up when you're playing to the clean channel and high on decibels. The bridge and tailpiece are Tom Pro locking, I've seen those on a lot of LTD and ESP guitars. They lock in place using the 1.5mm Allen wrench. Same goes for the tailpiece, Tom Pro locking stays in place through this 1.5mm bolt black to match the hardware of the snake bite. The controls are neck volume, bridge volume and a three-way switch which is pretty angled toward this side. Nothing too fancy with the finish, this is just the Snow White but I think I actually prefer it over the ESP version because the ESP is a combination of uh, I think poly and nitro finish and gets yellow over time. The polyurethane finish on the LTD stays white for longer. I prefer the snake bite to be white, not yellowish. Then there's the Macassar Ebony Fingerboard, the only major complaint I thought I would have with the snake bite, at least the new versions that have the Macassar Ebony. This particular one is not too bad, it's not the black ebony that we used to see on ESPs, but it's not too light, it's not brownish, it fits. 
we got set neck construction with a hill 24.75 inch scale length and for 2022 stainless steel extra jumbo frets pretty good looking pearloid inlays the 12 fret featuring the snake given the name snake bite without the eye for the LTD of course the nut is usually a problem on these guitars and I think it's too high even though the channels have been cut low I think they are too high on the high strings bending out of pitch the frets are okay we have side dot inlays ah yeah the last time I did that it was 2017 and I had just gotten my ESP iron cross it is so satisfying to peel these off something weird I've noticed look at this little piece of protective nylon on top of the thrust rod cover when I was peeling it off I noticed it was cut in between the leathers I think whoever makes these they press the JH signature while the protective nylon is still on top of the thrust rod cover the snake bite headstock is a home for these LTD black locking tuners not the spurts lockings that the 2011 models had the LTD 3D logo be careful with that one if you watch my videos you've probably seen that I've broken off not me but a friend of mine broken off the P on the ESP logo be careful when you clean it the truss rod is two way adjustable by a 4mm Allen wrench and check out the nut check it out this is the first time I'm seeing something like that it's almost like the workers at the Korean factory made a mistake when shaping the headstock and the neck and they fixed it with the nut <laughs> did they cut the bottom of the nut to fit their mistake the nut is 42mm wide or 1.65 inch the 12th fret is at 54mm or 2.12 inches thickness of the first fret 21mm or 0.82 inch thickness of the 12th fret 21.5mm or 0.84 inch the thickness of the body is 40mm or 1.57 inch I know the official specs says 14 inch radius but I'm measuring something between 12 and 14 so I'm calling this 12 14 inch radius the specs are not lying about the neck profile though we have a comfortable thin U the back of the body doesn't feature any comfort colorways the biggest difference that I see with the 2011 model is the neck joint doesn't have the set through neck construction it is a set neck with a heel small one but it's there at least the electronics compartment is painted pretty well with the shooting paint but I'm not sure why are LTD still using the solder on EMG pods and not the quick connect ones. I've tried both the solder on and quick connect EMG pods and I didn't find any difference in sound. The quick connect are easier to install and uninstall though, so they're more convenient. Why then LTD are still using the solder on older style of EMG pods? Are these cheaper? The output jack is also not on a quick connect system, black rectangular plate for it this is the 9 volt battery compartment it has this metal clip holding the battery in place I've seen on a lot of other LTDs let me show you something this is the cover for the electronics compartment shooting on the bottom gloss on the top he still has the protective nylon and the label on it I'm not gonna remove it the owner is gonna remove that now here is the cover for the 9 volt battery same gloss on the top but check out the corner do you see the white paint on it I think LTD and the world musical instruments are so in a hurry to make these that they don't wait for the paint to dry before they put the lids on them I guess they gotta meet demand so they're rushing these out of the factory I don't know if I should be happy that there's still demand on those or sad about the quality I'm gonna be replacing the original strap buttons with Shaler S locks the new model you can see the older model of Shalers on ESP snake bites the back of the neck is finished in gloss it has a small volute near the headstock designed by ESP logo the stupid compliance regulation that has no place on headstocks LTD locking black tuners made in Korea in the World Musical Instrument Factory in 2022 pretty fresh in March 2022 this is what the LTD locking tuner looks like outside of the headstock LTD logo on the locking mechanism doesn't use any screws it has these two holes and when you tighten it from the front it locks on the headstock the shallers had always been my favorite strap locks the old model and the new one I have a whole video about the new one you can check it out in it I explain the way it works the different choices when you buy them etc on the left you see the new shaller on the right is the original strap button the screw on the new shaller is a little bit thicker than the old one a lot of people don't know that you have different choices for the screws these are for the Gibson the thicker ones but I think they will work for the LTD I have to be extra careful not to crack the paint 
I'm using a 3mm Allen wrench to install them in place and I'm gonna rotate extremely slowly and listen for cracks in the paint and the finish. If you are careful enough you would be able to put them on without any problems and they are a perfect fit. Nothing too fancy for now, regular slinkies 1046 in E standard. The good news is that unlike the 2011 models, they now come with a proper ESP branded case specially shaped for the snake bite, designated C Snake Bite. It's a pretty sizable case, it's an explorer after all, has 4 latches, sturdy leather handle, this white stitching and protective rubber, feet on the bottom and on the side. It fits the snake bite perfectly, it is shaped to fit the snake bite. It's pretty much the same case the ESP snake bites use. It has this huge compartment for strings, tools, it comes with the key and some Allen wrenches. It is a tiny bit heavier than the 2011 model that I reviewed at 3600 grams. This one is 3800 or 8.38 pounds. Now let's hear it. That was the LTD snake bite in Snow White. In my opinion, the best finish for the LTD. Looks bigger, looks awesome, and it doesn't get yellow like the ESP. But it ain't cheap. As of this moment that I'm recording it, the LTD snake bite Snow White with a case costs almost $1,500 in Europe, but the dollar has risen in value. If you want a brand new to be the first owner to be untouched, to be in perfect condition, by all means, go for it, it's gonna cost you $1,500.
If you don't care about the Makassar Ebony brownish fingerboard and you don't need the absolute darkest ebony, go for it. I'm specifically talking about the Korean ones, I don't know how the Indonesian made are. What I would personally do though, is look for a mint condition used one with the ebony fingerboard, get that, upgrade it with the Spurzo locking tuners, put some shallow strap locks on it and be happy with it. If you already had a couple of snake bites, I would suggest you hold on to that money because I think something is coming from Gibson. Hopefully a signature for James Hetfield. Let's go Gibson, just do it!